In the last video, we did the filtered employees view, um, which allowed us to get a filtered list of our employee list using a search stream. Um, and we learned that uh, um, if you have a view with a parameter, you lose the benefits of memoization, um, but still it's pretty performant nonetheless. In this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a more of a deep level action so thus far, we've only done um, one action on the employer model. However, um, within the employer model, we have a big list of employees. And it's actually possible to come down to this level, to the employee level, and do actions um, at this deep level uh, rather than something high like employer. So to get started on the employee model, we'll just do a um, dot actions, just like we did with employer. Um, and this is going to do um, this kind of a self parameter, which is a representation of this instance of the employee node. And that's going to take in an arrow function. And right here, we'll have a list of functions that we'll do as actions that could be performed on the employee node. So I'll do um, function, and I'm going to do edit employee, where you can edit the name or hours worked. And obviously this will take in two parameters, one for a name of type string or hours and hours worked as in a type of number. And what I'll do here is I'm gonna do the apply snapshot function just as we would before. Um, and um, this, the apply snapshot, the first parameter is essentially what you're updating and then the second parameter is your new snapshot. What's kind of unique about this is since this is a little bit deeper than employer, you, you'll actually notice that this self is um, just the employee node. It doesn't include anything from our root model or our employer model. So if I actually I come here and I'll just, if I do self dot, you can see that there's just three properties, hours worked, ID, and name. And this is the representation of our employee model. Um, so in this case, when I do my apply snapshot, I just have to do the self and then comma, and then basically a new representation of this employee node. Um, and in this case, I can just do um, dot, dot, dot self, which just spreads the old um, employee properties on, which the only thing I'm really gaining from here is just the ID. Um, but then I can do uh, name and hours worked that are coming in from um, you know the edit employee function. Uh, I'll just clean up the self dot so I can stop getting that error. I need to make sure I return um, this new action that I created. So I'll just do a return edit employee. And that should be good to go. Uh, next, I'll need to actually um, call this action in my employee component. Um, and you'll have to bear with me because there is a lot of boilerplate in employee. And, and also because I'm gonna be accessing um, the employee node directly from the component, I need to make sure that I actually um, inject uh, the uh, root store into this component. So I'll do that uh, first off. So what I'm going to do to make this work is I'm going to add three items to state. Um, obviously, it's going to be the employee name. That's going to be of type of string. Um, hours worked. And I'm actually going to make this a string in the component. And then I'm going to do an edit flag of type boolean. And this just determines whether I can edit the employee at this current time or not. And obviously, um, we're going to need a constructor. So I'll do constructor props and I'll assign that to employee e component props and I'll do super props of course. Then I'll do a this.state and I'll create our initial state for these three values here, employee name um, and this will be just an empty string. Actually, um, what I'll do is I'll make it equal to the current employee name of the employee node. 
So to do that, you'll just do this dot props dot employee dot name. I'll do um, hours worked as well. And I'll set this equal to, um, actually this is gonna be, a, I'll have to cast this to a string because by default it is a um, number, but I want it to be a string here in this form. So I'll just do a template string dollar sign bracket this dot props dot employee dot hours worked and then I'll do edit and I'll set the equal to false by default and obviously I'll need my class methods as well to handle the change for these values um, so I'll actually specify three of these I'll do change employee na name and um, I'm actually just going to do a classical function. There is performance optimization that I'll talk about in a second. Um, for this, you'll just do const em employee name and grab that from e.target.value and then do this.set state, update the local component state um, with employee name. And I'll replicate this for hours worked. And instead of employee's name, it'll be hours worked. And I'll change that as well. Next, I need an on toggle class method. Or sorry, I'll just do maybe toggle edit. Um, and this will just be this dot set state. I'm going to grab the previous state and do an explicit object return to return the new state. And I'll just set edit equal to um, the opposite of its previous state. Um, prev dot edit. And this just flips the edit flag um, from false to true or true to false. Um, since these are classical functions, I have to bind these in the constructor, which is a little annoying, but um, there's a reason for it. E name um, this dot change employee name dot bind this, and I'll just create these two, and I'll do change hours worked. And I'll also do the same thing for toggle edit. And I also need an on submit handler. So I'll just go ahead and do that as well. Um, on submit. And this will be a classical function as well. Um, and then I'll do, um, this actually takes in a parameter of E. I'll just do any, and then I'll do um, e dot prevent default, which prevents a re reloading of the page. And I'll grab my items off the state, const employee name, and hours worked equals this dot state. Um, I misspelled employee name. And then I'll do this dot props dot employee and then dot um, here's the edit employee action that we made. So click there. And if you remember correctly, this it gives me a nice little typing here if you're using TypeScript properly. But I can I should pass in a name as the first parameter, and hours worked as the second parameter, and hours worked should be a number. So I need to make sure I cast that appropriately. So I'll do employee name and hours worked. Um, it's going to get mad at me for hours worked because um, it's, it's a string so I'll need to parse that to an int and that should be good. After that is done I will make sure that I will um, toggle the edit back and I got to make sure I 
bind on submit um, to the constructor. All right, so before I continue, there's one obvious thing here. Um, you may ask yourself, well, why did I not just use an arrow function here? And you know, why did I you know, go through the work of adding and binding these to the constructor? Um, so I really don't want to get too far on a tangent, um, but a, a really important note is that um, if you create an arrow function here, it binds the function to the instance of the component rather than the prototype. And so if you're familiar, a prototype is just like the, the base um, piece of the component. And so there's only one um, prototype uh, for that one particular component. Whereas an instance, there could be you know 10,000 instances. So if you're binding the function to the instance and you have 10,000 employees, then you're gonna be, you're gonna have like 10,000 instances of this method rather than just one. Um, so employer doesn't matter just because there's only one employer component. So you saw me use arrow functions in there. Um, since this employee, since there's a dynamic number of employees, I decided to just do a classical function and bind, manually bind these to the constructor. All right, that's enough for that side note. That's just a quick note of you know why I did that. Now, since we've set up all this stuff, we need to um, basically create our form here in the render section. We're almost done, so just bear with me. Um, the first thing I'll do is I'm just gonna grab uh, edit from set state. I'm gonna use destructuring to grab that. Um, and within this div here, uh, what I'll do is I'll just look at edit. And um, this is gonna be a bit of conditional rendering. So if edit is true, I'm going to render a form. Uh, if it's not true, I'm just going to render you know, what I had before. Um, and to make this play nice, I'll just you know, use the React fragment um, just so that I won't complain. Now in this edit, uh, basically when edit is true, I need a form here. So I'll do form. And I'll go ahead and do the on submit part here. And I'll set that equal to this dot on submit, and I'll close that off. And within this form, I'm going to have uh, two input fields to edit the employee's name and hours worked. So I'll do input, and that's going to be self enclosing. It's going to have value. Um, this value is going to be um, it should come from the state, this dot state dot employee name. And it's gonna have an on change of this dot, uh, should be change employee name. And I'll create the same thing for hours worked, changed hours worked. And this dot state dot hours worked. And I'll do two buttons, one for submit. So this should be um, button. And I'll do it on, well, actually I don't need any parameter there. I'll just call it submit. Um, let me fix the spelling of button here. And this one will be cancel. I do need to differentiate <laughs> the two here. Um, so the button, I'll have it of type sub type equals submit and cancel. Um, this one, I'll make it type button and then on click. Um, this should be whoop, click. This should be um, this dot toggle edit. Um, the so when you have a form, um, if you have a button by default, it, it it will execute the on submit here, but you can differentiate it by passing in a type. 
If you do type submit, then uh, clicking on this will actually execute on submit here. Um, if you have enough type button, it will not. Um, so that's the behavior that I want this cancel button to do is I don't want it to submit this. Instead, I just want it to cancel out of this edit form. Um, now down in here, I do need a button here just to um, take the user into edit mode. So I just add a button here and um, I'll just specify edit and this one will have an on click handler of um, this dot toggle edit. Whew. All right. So finally got that working. Now um, comes the moment of truth. Let's go into our app and let me just refresh this. And I'll try to type in an employee here, like a new employee. Say so Jeff uh, worked eight hours or nine hours. I'll submit him. Root store is not available. Make sure it is provided in your item provider. Oh, sorry. I think that's a simple, yeah. Uh, so I specified the wrong variable here. That should be root tree. If you remember in our root app, we pass this as root tree. Um, so we have to specify root tree in our inject. If this was root store, it would have worked, but um, I didn't have root tree here. So I'll come back here and I'll try this again. Jeff worked four hours and I got loaded there. Corey worked eight, nine hours. Um, Steven worked 20 hours. Um, now I'll come down here and try to edit one. So maybe I'll take Steven and I'll change this from 20 hours. I'll just say maybe like 15 and I'll click submit and boom, that gets updated. So there our actions work and we can also see the snapshot get updated properly. Um, so we can just kind of expand that out and expand Steven out. And we can look at the previous snapshot here. So the previous snapshot had Steven working 20 hours. The new snapshot has Steven working 15 hours. All right, so that's it for this video. Um, to recap what we covered, is on the MobX state tree, we created uh, an action on the employee level. And if you remember correctly on that self value, we were able to access um, just the uh, properties that were contained on the employee. And that made it easier to apply a new snapshot. Um, the snapshot was shallow. I did not have to apply anything above employee in the tree, which is really handy. And then we went through um, a lot of boilerplate in order to get um, that action actually hooked up here to the React component. Um, but at the end, we saw it was successful, so that's all fine and dandy. Um, so that um, that really completes the main part of MobX State Tree. I am going to do a bonus video next, and this essentially I'm going to show how to do an asynchronous um, action with MobX State Tree. And I'm also just going to do a little bit on, um, I'm going to touch up on the lifecycle methods as well. Um, I, I'm not actually going to hook up a back end for this, for the asynchronous action. Uh, I'm just going to show you how you would create the action um, in your in your MobX State Tree store. Uh, creating a back end would just take too long for this series. And I think it's already kind of long as it is. Um, but y you could easily just go do you know your own Firebase instance and just plop plop that to the back end. Um, so that's what I'll do in the next video. I'll see you then.